After the show with Judge David Williams, uh, continuing our conversation on uh, my blog, Bill's Eye. Uh, Judge, uh, which still sounds I'm used a little to be in the bull, I'm used to be in the bull's eye instead of <laughs> Bill's eye. <so. laughs> um, you mentioned to me when we were talking on the phone uh, earlier this week about uh, another Senate Bill 1 and other legislation. There, there are certain key pieces of legislation that, again, get the headlines, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of other legislation that don't quite reach that, that status. But mm -hmm. you, you mentioned another Senate bill, one that you were responsible for several years ago. Tell me about that. Well, one of the bills that I was pleased that we were able to pass was to set up certified or, uh, stroke centers around the state. Uh, I worked with some folks at the University of Louisville, a very important piece of legislation. My father, my late father, suffered from strokes. And to have the designation as a stroke center around the state and to have the protocols in place was very important to me. The Kentucky Agency for Substance Abuse Program legislation, which collectively brought all the resources in, in local communities uh, together to, to deal with the scourge of drugs and to recognize it takes a multidisciplinary approach to to uh, handle drug activity. Senate Bill 1 that was a major piece of um, uh, education legislation did away with the CATS test, put a new accountability system in, and had uh, longitudinal information available for children so that we'll know more about how they're doing from class to class. All of those are things that we're very pleased with. We worked with the Pew Foundation on uh, changing sentencing and as far as who we incarcerate and whether we are smart on crime, not just tough on crime. There are lots, lots and lots of pieces of legislation that never really make, make the headlines that I'm very pleased to have been a part of. Uh, when you got your uh, appointment mm -hmm. uh, to the judgeship and, and you had your final news conference in Frankfurt, we, we had the obligatory headlines uh, and uh, pieces in the news. Um, uh, you were, uh, uh, there were quotes from friend and foe uh, mm -hmm. uh, alike. You were uh, called everything from brilliant and charming to vengeful and, and, and churlish or I don't remember who called me that. Who was <laughs> We'll look at that. Um, but I, I tell you what I want to do, and, and this mm -hmm. is the this is the this is the way that 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 I want you to comment on that I, I use, and I always fall back to a, a Theodore Roosevelt uh, quotation that that I have to read because I can never memorize the whole thing. But he said, "Far better is it to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure." than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows not victory, not defeat. In the arena. That's you, what is this is in the arena speech. You, know? you you were in the arena. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I w was fortunate to be in the arena and um, uh, I never, I've, I've watched other leaders or people that were prominent inside the General Assembly leave. I think that anyone that takes a fair look at um, my career in the General Assembly will understand that I appreciated the separation of powers. I tried to defend the institution of the General Assembly, the authority over the budget, the authority of, of the General Assembly to collectively set the laws and policies of the state of Kentucky, to fight the incursion, intrusion of the judicial and the executive branch into the authority of the General Assembly. Now, the governors always try to expand the authority of governorships. So that just goes along with it. The courts always reach out to try to uh, to extend. That's the nature. But this sort of this sort of uh, friction between the three branches, and the sort of friction between Republicans and Democrats, and the friction between the House and the Senate, is an integral and ingenious part of the system of government that we have. And in the role I played as president of the Senate. It was my responsibility to defend the legislative process and the legislature as being an important part uh, of that system, not a superior part, but an equal branch of government. Let's go out on a, uh, uh, a story note. Uh, mm -hmm. You're infamous for your stories, but if you think of a, a particularly funny incident or uh, anecdote that uh, you recall uh, from your uh, time in Frankfurt, uh, meeting somebody or something that happened that just uh, uh, was really funny or a story that you can relate to us? Well, I, you know, the, every day, uh, every day uh, had, had its ups and downs, its ebbs and flows. Uh, you, you watch people, but I will tell you one, one particular incident. 
and shows what happens to you when you when when you do become leader of the Senate and the president of the Senate, and you become a little. By the way, tell us about that pen. That oh, you this on your this lapel. pen here I wore in honor of uh, the 2000. This is the, I had a pen made each year, and this was the first one in 2000 uh, when I became president of the Senate, the Republicans became the majority, and, and I had membership pens given to all members of the Senate, and I did that every year, and I don't know whether there's a set of 13 of them anywhere, but, <laughs> but um, I was sitting in a particularly tough, particularly tough uh, conference committee, uh, and I insisted on the conference committees later on being open to the public because really what happened inside wasn't being you know reported yeah. out very well by each side so I just thought that we'd open them up and so in a particularly contentious time and confrontational time on the budget which ha which happened frequently uh, and will continue to happen frequently even in my absence uh, there was this fella came up to me out in the hall and uh, he was telling me how important the uh, community college was down in Owensboro. And I said, well, I'm sure that we'll address it later. And he said, well, I, I can't take that for an answer. I can't take that for an answer. I've got to know something. You don't understand. I said, sir, I, I understand. So I go on back in and take my seat, and I'm trying to gather myself. We just taken, I had all these papers spread, and all the members were up and down. And here comes the guy again. <laughs> comes the guy again, and he's on my shoulder. And he said, listen, you have to listen to me. You have to listen. You have to hear what I have to say. And I said, now, look, you know, I'm tired. We've gone about as far with this conversation as we can. But he wouldn't stop. And I said, you see those state troopers over there? I said, yeah. I said, well, those state troopers are here to protect us during this process. <laughs> if you come over here and you continue to interfere and, and, and don't get off of me, you know, I, I, I'm just going to have to ask them to, to intervene here mm -hmm. because I, I just can't take this from you right now. I've got to get back to what I'm doing. So he walked he walked off and I punched the guy next to me and I said, who was that fellow? And they said, well, that's the new Republican state representative from Owensboro, Joe Bowen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, needless to say, I looked, up, uh, I looked up Joe pretty quickly after that and explained to him that I hadn't had the pleasure of meeting him. And uh, later on, I, I was able to support him in his race for state senate. And I understand that when the show is uh, shown, that it will be announced that he has uh, received a very important appointment as a committee chair over there. So it took me a long time to live that one down, and Joe told it. But, you know, those are the sort of things. At the time, it's hard for people to understand, but you couldn't walk down the hall. I mean, people were pulling and shoving and trying to get in, and, you know, you, you were mindful of all those sort of things. but. You know, the exhaustion uh, during those periods was, was something, but, you know, I, I remember that one. It taught me a pretty serious lesson, you know. Well, Judge, um, thanks a lot. Uh, don't uh, forget us about, uh, forget about us all, all the way up here in, uh, in the urban area. Uh, w we hope you'll come back and visit. Well, it, it's, it's a pleasure uh, to be with you here, and I've enjoyed my association with the Kentucky uh, Educational Television down through the years and with you, and, um, you know, I look at my, you know, I'm 59 and a half, and uh, a lot of people are just entering their political career at, at my age, and there are very few people that have an opportunity to start a new career in their hometown, and mm -hmm. I feel very blessed to do that. I wish everyone in the General Assembly the best, and the governor the very best as he handles these really difficult issues that face the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I, I see other states that are making courageous steps, Indiana, uh, you know, Michigan, uh, the states of the South are making courageous steps. And I just uh, would uh, hope that everyone uh, in the General Assembly and the governor realize that political capital, which you raise, is meant to be spent while you're still in office because after you leave, the political capital that you have accumulated is as worthless as Confederate money. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure.